So why don't we just dive right in. I am going to do the kale chips first because I do want to get those in the oven. I've already preheated my oven. Uh, I am going to switch to the overhead view now. Oh, Deborah, welcome. Uh, Lori Batista says that she has used dandelion greens in her smoothies. Wow, Lori, good for you. I mean, they are bitter. So um, if you can take them in your smoothies, maybe by adding some pineapple. Pineapple is a great equalizer uh, for bitterness in smoothies. That would be great. Lori, let us know how, you know, what kind of a smoothie you make with those because I'd love for you to share. So let's switch to the overhead view now. Okay, great, perfect. Nice view there and here comes the kale. So I am going to introduce you to several types of kale today. I mean, this recipe honestly could not be any easier. <laughs> we have some kale, uh, the lemon juice, and our tahini is going to be the dressing afterwards. And then the kale, we are just going to prepare with some avocado oil. Now I've chosen to use avocado oil today because it is a super heat resistant oil, meaning that uh, it's very safe to use at higher heats, although we're using a lower heat today. Uh, it's just a really heat resistant oil and very tasty with the kale chips. So you can see I have my kale leaves prepared here. This is Tuscan kale. So before I prepped it, this is what it looked like. I'm just gonna bring in some other kale to show you. You can use any type of kale for this recipe. This is Tuscan kale. This is a curly red leaf. Uh, once you cook the red leaf, um, it's really not going to stay that red. The antioxidants represented uh, that are represented by the purple color here are um, pretty sensitive to heat, so they are going to lose their color, but still great fun to use if you have access to that. Um, and then this is just a regular curly kale. So the, you're going to prepare them all the same way. So most of them do have this tough spine. I showed you last week, I think, or the week before how to do this. So you don't need a fancy tool, just use your fingers. Start separating the leaves at the base and then just run your fingers, done. So you can compost that and then you're left with the leaves. So I'll actually just add that here. Here's another piece of Tuscan kale. You can see the tough spine. You do want to remove the tough spine because kale chips with a tough spine really aren't the best eating experience. And it is so easy to remove. Okay, so there's our Tuscan kale. And you can see that with the leafy green, you know, it's, it might be actually a little bit more difficult because the leaves are a little irregular. We just tear them off just like that. Put that over here because we don't need that anymore. And the same for the purple kale. Hi, Preeti, thank you for joining me. So you just see, just peel that off and then you're left with just the leaves, which is perfect. So now we have our kale, which is in large pieces. And all you really want to do is tear them into bite-sized pieces. It is not a science. Um, this one has still a little bit more spine to it. So just tear them apart. They are going to shrink. So like this size, which is really, you know, almost the palm of my hand, that's fine too. Really depends on how big you want your crisps to be. Now these chips or crisps, um, they do get very crunchy and they're very delicate. So this is not a crisp that you are going to be dragging through a dip, which is why I am sharing with you this really delicious tahini drizzle, which is super simple. Let me just work through the rest of this. Lori has said uh, she usually just adds some greens, some banana, avocado, and almond milk, and maybe some coconut water in her smoothie when she uses her dandelion greens. That's awesome, Lori. Yeah, I think the sweetness of the coconut water and the banana might help with the bitterness of dandelion greens. And you could use kale in that, that kind of a smoothie too. Okay, so one of the keys to making the perfect kale chip is to make sure that your kale is dry. So I washed my kale ahead of time and then I squeezed it dry with some paper towels or you could use a clean kitchen towel. You really do want it dry so that the oil sticks. Um, the recipe calls for, let me grab it here, uh, two tablespoons of avocado oil. So I am going to just estimate here. I don't have my 
tablespoon here. I don't recommend you do this. You really should measure, but I have a pretty good eye for amounts. Okay, so drizzle it on, and then you don't want to massage the kale. You just want to make sure that it is covered. So just toss it gently. If you massage it, it'll break down, and then the, the crisps will be even more delicate. And you, you really don't want that. Just kind of rub your palms together. You can see, making sure that this avocado oil is being well distributed so that all of my leaves are glossy. You can see how glossy and bright green they are now. Perfect. Here we go. And now my cuticles are really soft too. That avocado oil is really just very, very nice to use. Now I'm going to season it with salt. So that about a half a teaspoon of salt. If you're on a low sodium diet, then you can skip the salt. I'm going to add some pepper. And here is the point. Hi, Margaret. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, I am doing just salt and pepper, but I have in the recipe given you other recommendations. I love kale chips with nutritional yeast. Actually, you know what? With this batch, why don't we just go ahead and do that? Let's Let's go ahead and add some nutritional yeast. So this is nutritional yeast. I have introduced it in previous demonstrations. It is an inactive yeast uh, and B12 grows on it. So it's very rich in B12. So it has a bit of a cheesy flavor and aroma. So let me just open this up. I'm really just gonna sprinkle it on. Oh, I want more. Let's open this up a little bit. Great. Have any of you used nutritional yeast in your cooking? It is a wonderful plant-based solution to getting that cheesy flavor. Let's just pour that on, nice. So the B12 is going to hold up to the heat, so you'll still be getting that nice B12. Look at that, nice and cheesy. Cumin is great, cayenne pepper is great. I have even added two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar to make like a like a vinegar salt and vinegar chip which is really fun for the kids okay so this is a head of kale i'll tell you i'll share with you that my children one will eat all of this <laughs> so it's really cool um, if you can get your family excited about kale chips just a really cool way to get them to increase their intake of leafy greens because they really just fly off the plate okay so now i'm going to uh, line a baking sheet with parchment paper let's see here if I can grab this, just wanna show you this as well if you haven't seen it already. Many of you are already familiar with these. So these are parchment baking sheets. This will ensure that my kale chips are nice and crisp. Okay, so you want to space them out. Give them lots of room. If you crowd them, they're not going to crisp up. So, uh, you know, the, the longest time you're gonna be taking really is cooking these babies because you're going to need to switch them out. I think I'm probably, with these chips, going to be able to get about four sheets. I'm just going to do one here to demonstrate for you. Okay, great. So that, they're spaced out pretty well. They're very glossy. Um, Janet is asking if you can use regular yeast. No, you cannot it would not taste that good. <laughs> so Janet, you'd need to use nutritional yeast to get that cheesy feeling. But if you um, are okay with uh, using cheese, if you eat cheese as part of your diet, just use some Parmigiano cheese. Uh, use a hard cheese though. So as opposed to like a mozzarella, if you wanted to melt mozzarella on the chips afterwards, you can, but not while you're baking. You really need a dry cheese on there. So great, some uh, Parmigiano would be really lovely on these or the nutritional yeast. And again, uh, cumin would be amazing. Curry powder, you can make all different kinds of flavor combinations. So I'm going to pop this in the oven. And while that is cooking, we'll go ahead and make the simple tahini. There we go. So it's a two, I think I have this one at 275. Did I tell you 275? Let me see. Uh, yes, 275. And that is going to cook. I want to check that at about the, I think about the 15 minute mark. All right, so now we're just going to make this simple tahini dressing. Uh, this squeezable tahini is truly worth its weight in gold. If you haven't purchased it already, um, go ahead and do that. You can buy it on Amazon. I think you can buy it like in pairs. Uh, if you're lucky enough to be near a Whole Foods, they almost always have this. It's just really super popular. Um, and then look at this lemon. I think I'm going to need a different 
squeezer. I have my lemon squeezer here. Let's go to the overhead so that you can see. Um, but sometimes you get like these really giant lemons <laughs> and uh, that's definitely not gonna fit. So let me come over here. I have an orange. So this is usually used to squeeze oranges. This lemon is no way going to fit in here and I'll get really frustrated. So uh, the recipe calls for the juice of a lemon. So let me just trim it here because this is Oh, really getting close to like grapefruit size. My goodness. Okay, and now we are going to cut it in half. And we'll go ahead and get it into our squeezer. Look at that. It fills it all up. Okay, just squeeze your lemon into a dish. Hi, Rima. Welcome. We are just making our tahini, our nice tangy tahini drizzle for our kale chips. Okay, so that's done. Let me just wipe this down. And now we are going to add our tahini. So it's two tablespoons of tahini. So let's just, I'll just show you how this squirts out. So we have to see that's one and two. There we go, that's about right. Let's get ourselves a nice tiny whisk here and just whisk it up. If you do not have this squeezable tahini, oh, I think that's more lemon juice than I really needed. So I'll have to add more tahini, which is totally fine with me. I'll have extra. You really want this creamy like a dressing. There we go. Nice. You're going to want this to drizzle. Uh, let me just get back to what I was saying. So if you are using a tahini that is more firm than this and you're not getting this kind of rich uh, drizzle, uh, you can add some hot water, some warm water. Okay, so I think this is just right. We might need to add, now I added too much tahini, which is not a problem. I'll just add some hot water before we spread, um, drizzle that onto our kale. So that's it. So while your kale chips are cooking, just go ahead and make this quick tahini drizzle. I love adding some cayenne to this as well. Makes it really like tangy and spicy and just really lovely. All right, does anybody have any questions about either the tahini dressing or the kale chips? Because I am going to bring out the ingredients for our next recipe. We're really ready to move along here. Okay, so let's switch to the overhead for that. All right. Rima, welcome. Okay, so let's put this drizzle, just put this behind me. And why don't we go ahead and make the warm mushroom and greens saute. Let's get all of our ingredients out. It's gonna take me just a little bit. There's quite a bit here. Here we go. This is our bowl for mixing our dressing. We have some scallions that we're going to need to chop. There we go. Let's see, can you see everything? Yep, looks like you can. And then I just wanted to show you this contraption. I'm sure most of you probably already have this. Do you guys know what this is? This is a salad spinner. So you put your greens in the middle of the basket. This, it has a basket and insert. You fill the basket with water. So you submerge your greens and let them sit. Dandelion greens are notoriously dirty. So you really do need to soak them so that all of the dirt goes to the bottom. Then you lift your basket out, dump your water, put your basket back in and put your top on and then just press down and you can see how it spins. You really give it a hearty spin so that you get it nice and dry. I did these ahead of time and you can see that. I really, I use my salad spinner every single day, especially when I do grocery shopping uh, because I wash and dry all of my greens and then store them in produce bags in my refrigerator. Okay, so these are the ingredients for our saute. So let's go ahead and review them. We have one pound of mushrooms. So Mushrooms come in like a five ounce to an eight ounce package. Uh, so it really, you can do 10 or 12 ounces, uh, 10, anywhere from 10 to 16 ounces, sorry. Um, these are two eight ounce packages. So this is um, 16 ounces of mushrooms. Uh, you could use criminy. I think these are shiitake. Uh, and by the way, I bought these pre-sliced. So they were pre-washed, pre-sliced, done. Really simple. 
I have one bunch of dandelion greens. So dandelion, dandelion greens typically come in a pretty hardy bunch. This is a lot. I might not need it all, um, but I have washed it and dried it. And I've noted on the recipe too that you can use chard or kale, whatever's available to you. We have some scallions that we're going to use. We have our avocado oil um, and we have our sesame oil. This is the sesame oil we're going to be using to saute with the avocado oil. For our dressing uh, for this saute, we have three tablespoons of sesame seed, three tablespoons of rice vinegar. Uh, we have two tablespoons of coconut aminos, and I'll show those to you, and two teaspoons of maple syrup. So let me show you our coconut aminos. This is a replacement for soy sauce. So this is soy free and wheat free. Uh, so if, if you want to use soy sauce, feel free. Um, it would be an equivalent to the coconut aminos, but I have these in the pantry, so I'm using them. And the sesame oil that I am using is toasted. So the toasted sesame oil has a very strong flavor, uh, which is why we're not using too much of it. If you are using an untoasted or a raw sesame seed oil, that's totally fine too. It's just going to have a milder flavor. You can see this um, oil is darker. The um, untoasted sesame oil will be a much paler color. Uh, lastly, for the vinegar, and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make the dressing first because I want to get these out of the way. But I just wanted to tell you about rice vinegar. So rice wine vinegar comes seasoned and unseasoned. You really want the un unseasoned. Uh, the seasoned rice vinegar simply means it has sugar in it. So uh, I would rather control the amount of sweetness, which is uh, the maple syrup that we're using in this recipe. Uh, so try, if you can, try and find the unseasoned. If all you can find is the seasoned, uh, you might not even need the maple syrup here. So just whisk your dressing ingredients here that are listed at the bottom there. And then we'll set this aside. Just put this, let's see, put this over here. And we will go ahead and heat up our oils. So here is our sesame oil. Great, you can see that, perfect. Here's our sesame seed oil. And let's see, it calls for, uh, where are we, two tablespoons or a tablespoon? Let me see here. Two tablespoons of avocado oil. Great, so I will add our two tablespoons. This is about one. This comes out very slowly, so it's nice. And about two there. So just warm your oils gently. And I'm gonna go ahead and add my mushrooms. This pan gets hot pretty quickly. Oh, there was a shiitake that didn't get sliced so well. So let me just go ahead and give that a slice here. So with mushrooms, um, and we have demonstrated them bef before in other cooking demos, they look very dry and they feel very dry, but they actually hold quite a bit of fluid. You want to cook them until they release their fluid. So right now they're very dry, they're very rubbery. I'm going to cook this over a medium heat. Hi Joyce, welcome. I'm going to cook these over a medium heat until they begin to release their fluid. Let me just turn this down a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to put the lid on while I chop the other ingredients so that it will encourage the mushrooms to sweat. They're gonna sweat just very much like um, an eggplant would. Um, Miriam has a question. You said you wash your greens when you bring them home from the store. I thought fruits and veggies were only washed just before you use them. Miriam, that's a really great question. So hardy greens like kale and the dandelion greens are also pretty hardy. The hardier leafy greens you can absolutely wash dry and store in a produce bag. Uh, you can even wrap them in paper towels and store them and they'll stay great. The benefit to having your greens pre-washed, actually let's just come to center while we have that conversation so I can change the view for a second, great. So the benefit to washing your, your hardier greens and your hardier vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower ahead of time is that they're already prepped and washed and so you're one step closer to the plate. If every time you had to cook, you had to wash and dry and chop, um, it, it's not, sometimes it's just not gonna happen. You're either too tired or you just don't want the hassle. It really just 
just shortens that time between the fridge and the plate. Um, but you are correct in assuming that some of your more delicate greens like arugula or spinach, you don't have to wash those ahead of time. And in fact, a lot of those you can buy pre-washed. I'm really talking about your hardier greens. I eat quite a bit of collard and kale at home. Those are hardier greens. They last really well, uh, again, in a, those mesh produce bags in your refrigerator after they're washed. So I hope you feel comfortable with that, Miriam, and give it a try. So let's, hi, Linda. Welcome. Good to see you. Hope you guys are having a great summer. All right. I am continuing to stir my mushrooms. You can see all of the steam here is being re released smells really great i like using um, asian mushrooms and dark mushrooms as much as possible because the research on the health benefits of mushrooms uh, does focus on the asian mushrooms so mushrooms like enoki and oyster and shiitake and maitake they have uh, really great health benefits um, that have that have been studied so I do encourage um, you to try, and if you're a registered dietitian, encourage your clients to select those types of mushrooms when they're cooking. All right, so we are probably just a few minutes away from adding our dressing and the rest of our ingredients. So I'm going to go ahead and change the view again. We're going to chop our scallions and our dandelion greens. <clears throat> oh, you're welcome, Miriam. Great, I hope you give it a try. Just saves you a lot of time. Okay, so I'm just going to keep my scallions in a bunch. You can see that I am using the green part. I did not saute the scallion greens ahead of time because I really like the freshness that they give to the dish, so I don't want to overcook them. I'm going to add them right now while the mushrooms continue to cook. So they'll soften a little bit, but I do like the freshness. You could use any onion here. Shallots would be lovely really like shallots or leeks. Okay, let's get our scallions in here. And we'll stir these up. Oh, great, so our mushrooms are sticking now and they're soft and a little glossy. I'm getting very close to adding the rest of our dressing here. All right, just wanna give it a little bit more time while we go ahead and chop the dandelion greens. So this was a huge bunch of dandelion greens. I, I'm not gonna use it all because it's, it's all, it's really tight here and when I open it up, it's just a lot. So you can see, they look just like the dandelion greens that grow in the yard. Um, if you treat your yard, I don't suggest that you use dandelion greens. Um, forage dandelion greens unless you know that they haven't been sprayed. There we go. And so using this dressing, which is sweet and sour, um, really neutralizes the bitterness of these greens. Wow, this is a lot. I'm going to have plenty for my salads this weekend, which is great. Any green will do here. If you're using something like a spinach, it's going to cook a lot quicker, uh, but kale is a great option too, Swiss chard. Let me check on my, oop, my kale chips are almost ready. All right, so before we add our greens, we're actually going to add our dressing. All right, let's go ahead and just give this a whisk one more time. I love the sesame seeds in here. It really gives it a nice texture. So deglazing, whoop. I knew my kale chips were just about ready. Oh boy, I can smell the vinegar. Now what we want to do is just cook off the vinegar a little bit. So let me crank this up because we don't want it too sour. And just crank it up a little bit. Look at how pretty that is. Uh, the greens are going to be added and then we're going to actually turn off the heat. You don't even have to cook these greens. They'll wilt in this dressing, but I do want to cook off, oops. some of the liquid here. I don't want it too soupy. Just cranked up the heat a little bit. You could mix the mushrooms too. Criminy, shiitake, maitake. You could get mixed. I really love purchasing the pre-sliced organic onions. Really saves me a lot of time. So I'm going to just let that cook off. Any questions on this recipe? 
me just check on our kale chips, yes. So with the parchment paper and the kale chips, sometimes you don't even need to flip your chips. Oh yeah, these are really nice and crispy. I'm gonna take these off. You can see, I'll just show you right here. See, nice crispy kale chip. My children are gonna be super excited. They really like the nutritional yeast one. Just let those cool back here. All right. So this is ready now. So I just cooked it for maybe three to five more minutes. And you can see a lot of that vinegar dressing has been soaked up. And now I'm going to add my dandelion greens. They're nice and dry. Do you want to make sure they're dry? Because if you add too much water to this, it will dilute the flavors that you added. I actually think I'm going to use my tongs right now to kind of turn this over. I don't want to lose any of these greens. So just stir it together to make sure it's combined. You want the greens covered with the dressing. You can see they've already started to wilt. This is such a beautiful dish. I think I'm going to top this with uh, some fresh cilantro tonight. That'll be really nice. A squeeze of lime juice would also be really great. This is a side dish, but if you wanted to add edamame beans or some extra firm tofu, you will have a main dish pretty quickly. All right, look at that, done. I'm going to turn that off and let's clean our workspace so that we can move on to the next recipe. I am going to cover this uh, so that the dandelion greens continue to wilt a little bit, but we are done. Easy peasy, right guys? All right. So any questions on this recipe? If you're watching this as a recording and you have any questions about anything that I'm doing or something else uh, related to nutrition and food, uh, just tag me in the comments and I'll make sure that I get back to you. So we are going to move on to our, basically it's a no cook recipe. I've already pre-blanched the collard leaves. I'll talk you through that. I already have a video on the Living Plate Facebook page on, and also on my Instagram on how to blanch the collards. So I'll talk you through that now, um, but I'll show you how to make the rest of the recipes. So let's take a look at the ingredients for our collard wraps with white bean hummus. So we're going to make the white bean hummus. It's really a quick white bean hummus uh, that we're going to do first. Just get this out of the way here. Great. So white bean hummus calls for white beans. Lemon juice, I pre-squeezed this one. And tahini. So we are going to add our beans, lemon juice, tahini, oh, and our garlic. Oh, don't wanna forget that, where are you? There you are. Okay, so this is really just a quick uh, white bean spread. This is one can of beans. I used um, Eden brand, which does contain kombu seaweed. It really does help um, reduce the uh, gas uh, produced when digesting beans. So a great thing to look for. Uh, it, the kombu seaweed is K-O-M-B-U. It's in the list of ingredients. I did rinse the beans, so they're nice and clean. Uh, we have the juice of a lemon. I think we have two tablespoons. Let me see here. Oh, one tablespoon of tahini. I might have been a little generous there. And then two cloves of garlic. So let's come to center because my Cuisinart is here. So my food processor is here. Let's just add our ingredients. We have our can of white beans. It's about a cup and a half of canned white beans. You could use any bean here. If you wanted to make a black bean hummus, a kidney bean hummus, garbanzo bean, whatever, they all work. I have my lemon juice. Um, you could add cayenne to this as well of course, to make it more spicy if you wanted. I'm going to add my tahini, which look at how that pours, wow. Just love this tahini so much. If you missed it uh, earlier when I introduced it, it's mighty sesame tahini. It's just creamy and delicious. And then we have our garlic, which I'll actually just give a rough chop here. So I have my whole garlic, I just removed the skins. The reason why you wanna give it a rough chop is if you add this whole clove to your food processor, almost always it's going to get caught on the blade and just go for a ride and it won't get incorporated into your 
uh, bean dip or your hummus. So just a rough chop is all you need. You can see that was pretty easy. Add this to your food processor and run it. It's going to pulse it. You could leave it a little chunky, but I like it pretty smooth for this recipe. So I'm just going to let it run a little bit longer. Great, we're done. That is our white bean spread that is going to be used on the inside of our collard wrap. So let's take out the rest of the ingredients and we'll talk through um, how to assemble this recipe. I'm going to turn off my oven because we don't need that anymore. Okay, we are moving right along here today. So Miriam, this is an example of something that you could do ahead of time as well. So these are my collard leaves that have already been blanched. So to blanch a collard leaf, you simply trim the raw end off. I actually used this pan. You take a large saute pan and put about an inch of water in it and you simply take your collard leaf after you've trimmed the end and broken the spine. So let me just show you how I did that. Holding my knife very carefully with the blade away from me, you just whack it with the heel of your hand to break the spine. We do that so that we can roll it like this. And then you just put it into the water until it turns bright green, which is about 30 seconds. Honestly, it doesn't take that long. The instructions are in the recipe. Take it out, rinse it in cold water, and layer in paper towels. So these will keep in your refrigerator for up to four days really, really well, just like that. And then when you feel like having a sandwich really with anything, <laughs> could stuff this with anything, you have this already made. So let's put that aside and we'll bring out all of our ingredients here. We have some additional greens, some avocado for healthy fat. Look at all this beautiful color. Wonderful. This is, this is like a produce parade right here, huh? Okay. So these collards are going to be stuffed with the white bean spread, which is in our Cuisinart over here. I'll take that out. Uh, we are going to use, you can use any vegetables that you want. The key is to cut them so that they don't pierce through the collards. So you can shred your carrots or slice them. I purchased some pre-shredded organic carrots, so that's great. Spinach, pre-purchased, already washed. Uh, the the uh, pepper, I'll show you how I slice that along with some scallions. So you do want to have you know, a variety of flavors. You want something a little bit sweet, which would be the pepper and the carrot, uh, something you know, just crunchy and crisp like the cucumber. Uh, the onion is great. Uh, I am going to be using some basil and I will show you how I store that when we do the, the uh, front view, and then some healthy fat. Like th that's really just a great combination. So let me, of ingredients, let me just move these over and we'll just start prepping what is not prepped already. So for your scallions, oh, we have some questions, great. Oh, Liz, thank you so much for posting the Mighty Sesame. That's great. Uh, Miriam has a question. She's had a trouble finding the pre-shelled edamame. Uh, you know what, Miriam, you just really have to keep looking. Uh, if your Whole Foods didn't have it, they were probably just sold out. Um, I don't really have any suggestions other than to call ahead to see if your frozen food section at your grocer has the shelled edamame. And when you do find it, Miriam, my suggestion is just buy like three or four bags. Just keep them in your freezer. So you can see I'm slicing these pretty thin. Holding my knife properly, you want to hold your, the, the handle and uh, pinch the base of the blade. It's a little awkward getting used to that at first, but I promise you it's a way to go. Okay, so that's done. And then our pepper, we've covered this quite a bit before, but I'll show you for those of you who are new. You want to just cut off the end of your pepper. That one has a little rotten spot, so I'm going to get rid of that. And then you can see where all the seeds are on the inside. This pepper is making my life really easy right now because it has seeds very close to the top. They're not really that close to the bottom. It's a longer pepper. You could use any color pepper here. Okay, I think that's going to be enough for our purposes today. And then just make sure that you cut them about the same size as your scallions here. The thinner and you know the skinnier, the better. It won't, it tends, it will tend not to poke through the 
uh, collared. So now you're starting to see the wrap take shape, right? So these are about, you can see these are about the same size. I'm gonna trim this one a little bit. Oh, Lori, I'm sorry that you have to leave, but please go ahead and view the uh, video. It'll be on the Living Plate Facebook page when you are available to watch the rest. I'm so glad that you joined us. Okay, so let's get through the rest. Great, I think that's actually quite enough. So there we go. And now we are going to start assembling our wrap. Let's move this to the side. Let's unwrap our little gifts here. And actually, let me go ahead and do the avocado. If you haven't seen this before, you can watch as we do the avocado. So uh, to select a nice ripe avocado, you want a nice dark brown skin, a little glossy, not too much. It should yield just to the touch. Um, sometimes you do everything right, guys, and then you still get a bum avocado, <laughs> uh, which is always sad. But I think this one's going to be great. Just really never know. You wanna insert your knife in the top, rotate it around, and then just twist. Lovely, that's pretty. And for the wraps, you want very carefully. Now I'm using my chef's knife because I'm very comfortable with it, but you could use a paring knife just for a little bit more control. And you see we're getting the same kind of a long slice here. And then just take a spoon, just grab one here, and just scoop it out. We'll just leave this guy over here for now. So I wanna make sure I get all the flesh out as much as possible. Perfect, here we go. Great, now he's going to be incorporated into our wrap. All right, so um, you can wrap it either way. It doesn't matter which is facing forward. Um, so I'm just going to use the inside here. You want to take about two tablespoons of your bean dip and spread it on your leaf using a spatula, something soft. This is a cute little spatula that I got. I think I got it from Crate and Barrel. really like it. And just smear it. This is really what's going to hold the wrap together and provide a little bit of bulk. And then just start layering your ingredients. You don't want to fill it up too much. You want to do it on the, like the front third here. I'm going to add some carrots. This is nice and pretty. Lots of color. Add my spinach, so more leafy greens which is great. Many leafy greens as you can get. Add some avocado to this one. And now to wrap. So, oh wait, I forgot my cucumber. Oh dear, don't wanna do that. All right, we wanna get our cucumber, about the same size as these guys over here. So actually, I'm gonna do it this way. Just cut it into four nice pillars here and then just slice each one into four. There we go. Oh, this one's loaded. Great. Okay. And then you just roll it. You can leave the ends open if you want. If your collard leaf is, oops, my avocado's slipping out. If your collard leaf is wide enough to tuck them in, you can, but you don't have to. It does make them pretty. And that's it. That's the wrap. Let me get my plate. We'll go ahead and plate that. So you could make these ahead of time. They will last in your refrigerator for up to four, three to four days really well. Um, wrap it in like a glad press and seal, or you can just kind of stack them into a glass baking dish and store them covered in your refrigerator. Okay, let's get the other leaves out. I'm not going to make six, but I'm going to demonstrate three, which should be, or maybe even just two, which should be enough for you to get the idea. Okay, so here is our collard leaf. I'm gonna take, again, about two tablespoons to a quarter cup. A quarter cup's about four tablespoons, so I would say that that's kind of like the sweet spot. It really does depend on the size of your collard leaf. Just spread it out and add your ingredients. Got my carrots, my peppers, my, ooh, this is a nice piece of avocado. I think I only need one there. Let's get a couple of pieces of cucumber the inside. This is an English cucumber. It does not have seeds. It's really nice because it doesn't have so much water in it. And this is loaded. Let's roll it up. And actually I'm going to fold just this one side so that you can see how pretty it is when you have it this way. Isn't that great? All right. So we have our 
collar wraps. They're all done. Does anybody have any questions? Oh, Liz, thank you. For those of you who live in New Jersey, in central New Jersey, the Trader Joe's in Bridgewater, Liz is telling us, does carry the shelled edamame. Oh, I forgot the basil. Oh, well, you always forget something. But I did, <laughs> I did want to show you. So add basil, add an herb to your collard wraps. It really just adds a nice punch of flavor. So some parsley, um, some basil. It is yet another leafy green that you're adding to your spinach, leafy green, and your collards, leafy green. Um, the collards, while you know we use them as a leafy green, they are a cruciferous vegetable. Uh, so they have added health benefits. Um, and they're also a really great source of plant-based calcium. So collards, like if you can figure out how to get this done for yourself on a regular basis with a variety of fillings, you're really um, going to be consuming a very nutrient dense uh, meal or snack. So this is how I keep my basil. I did get a question um, from somebody in an email about how to uh, keep and use your herbs. Uh, Miriam, this is the circumstance where you do not wash before you store them in your refrigerator. Uh, so I cut these in my garden this morning, but even if you buy the basil in the store or any herb in the store, give them a fresh cut, Put them in about two inches of water, making sure that um, the, only the stems are in the water. If you put the leaves in the water, they will rot. So just the stems in the water, and then put them in your refrigerator just like this, and then use them and wash them and use them as you need to eat them or as you need to use them in a recipe. Um, so these basil leaves should have ended up <laughs> in the collard wraps, I forgot. Uh, so that's how you can store your herbs. They will not only last longer, but they'll be fresher um, and they won't turn brown. If you wash them and then put them in your refrigerator, they will turn brown and rot uh, pretty quickly. So it's a great way to keep your herbs nice and fresh. So we are ready to plate. I think, wow, we are ahead of schedule. Really got these recipes done today. Um, while I I switch to the overhead view and do the reveal and plating. Why don't you share with me what you think you're going to make from this demo? I would love to hear from you about what you are excited to make for yourself and your family. Okay, so here are our collard wraps. You could serve these collard wraps with the tahini drizzle, like as a dip. Wouldn't that be fun? Look, we have our tahini drizzle here, which I am going to... Uh, use with our kale chips, but you could put these, you know, this dip in here and serve it with your um, collard wraps. I think that that would really be delicious. Let's get this out of the way here. Okay. I think I'm going to need to add a little bit of hot water to my tahini here because I do want it to drizzle over our kale chips. So you can see I added a little bit of hot water there. Yeah, perfect. So more like a dressing than a dip. Perfect. So that's good. The tahini really, the tahini and lemon juice really can handle uh, the water. You're not diluting the flavor too much. Uh, I did not season this with salt and, salt and pepper, but actually I think I'm just going to use salt in the tahini. And it's just a little bit because remember our kale chips are already seasoned with salt and pepper. Okay, let's just keep this over here. So there's our tahini drizzle for our kale chips. So I have two versions here. So this is the kale chip that we made together. You can see these are super, whoops, super crispy. Can you hear that? Just hitting the plate. Very crispy, super delicate. Um, one of my favorite things to do with, especially this one, which is the nutritional yeast, is to crumble it in my hands, make like a dust, and serve it with popcorn. Really yummy. Oh, Preeti's going to add sauteed tofu strip to the wrap. Oh, you know what, Pretty? That's a great idea. Um, saute that tofu in some ginger. That would really add some wonderful flavor to the collard wrap. Okay, so you can see that I have the other half free because I made these ahead of time because I know that this is not going to be nearly enough for my family when I get home and I needed to make more. So I made these with the curly kale ahead of time. You can see it looks a little bit different really just delicate fluffy and nice oh look at that okay and let's go ahead and drizzle oh who am i kidding these aren't going to last until i get home i'm going to eat these now actually let's see here let's get a spoon 
so that we can drizzle this nicely. There we go. So just drizzle your chips just before you eat them so that they don't get too soggy. This just adds a really nice bit of flavor to the chips. So plain or with your drizzle. Those are our kale chips and here is our saute. Let me just take this away for a second. Wonderful. And we have our dish here. This is the mushrooms with the dandelion greens and this beautiful sweet and sour sesame dressing. So, you want me to cut one of these collard wraps in half? Let's see what this looks like. So this collard wrap is super firm. You can see that. You could put anything here. You can make a taco out of this, a burrito. They're super firm. There we go. That is the inside of my lunch today. So let's put this up like this so that you can see all those beautiful colors. Remember the colors are all those antioxidants shining through. I will see you all in the kitchen next week. Uh, talk to you soon. Bye.